NASA in coming days intends to launch a rover to be deployed on Mars fueled with 10.6 pounds of plutonium. If there's an accident before the rover is well on its way to Mars and deadly plutonium is released on Earth, it could be disastrous. Indeed, folks in Florida concerned about an accident on launch and one in a hundred rockets historically destruct at launch have created a Facebook page warning people not to visit Disney theme parks in Orlando during the November 25th to December 15th launch window. The Facebook page is titled, Don't Do Disney, brought to you by NASA. And there's an online petition to the White House to stop the launch of the nuclear-powered rover that NASA calls Curiosity. There's a significant chance that plutonium could be released. NASA's final environmental impact statement says, overall, it declares, the chance of plutonium being released on the mission is just one in 220. An explosion on launch dispersing the plutonium would impact in Florida as far as 62 miles from the Cape Canaveral launch site, says the environmental impact statement. That includes Orlando. An accident as the Atlas V rocket carries the rover up into the atmosphere could impact on a much larger area. If there's a rocket malfunction or explosion and the Curiosity rover falls back to Earth, breaking up in the atmosphere, the EIS says people could be affected anywhere between 28 degrees north and 28 degrees south latitude. That's a band around the midsection of the Earth, which includes much of South America, Africa, and Australia. The cost of decontamination, up to $1.5 billion for each square mile of mixed-use urban area, uh, says NASA in its document. The mission itself has a cost of $2.5 billion. Plutonium is the most lethal of all radioactive substances. A millionth of a gram inhaled can cause lung cancer. NASA, through the years, has sent rovers to the moon and Mars, which have gotten their power for locomotion from solar energy. It says Curiosity needs nuclear power because it's to go to places on Mars without sufficient sunlight. The mission's aim is to try to determine whether there's life on Mars. Life on Earth is being threatened for that. As to NASA's claim that it can't use solar energy on this rover mission, it said the same thing about space probes sent beyond the orbit of Mars. They too needed nuclear power, said NASA, but this August, NASA launched the Juno space probe powered by solar energy to Jupiter. Accidents have happened in the U.S. space nuclear program. Of the 26 U.S. space missions using plutonium power listed in the NASA EIS for Curiosity, three, the EIS acknowledges, underwent accidents. The worst occurred in 1964 and involved the SNAP-9A plutonium system on board a, a satellite that failed to achieve orbit and dropped to Earth, disintegrating as it fell. The 2.1 pounds of plutonium fuel dispersed widely over the Earth. Dr. John Goffman, professor of medical physics at the University of California at Berkeley, long linked this accident to an increase in global lung cancer. NASA had insisted then on nuclear power for satellites too. With the SNAP-9A accident, it switched to solar energy on satellites. Now all satellites and the International Space Station are solar powered. Meanwhile, NASA, the Obama White House, and SpaceX, one of the several corporations in which many of U.S. space activities have been transferred with the end of the shuttle program, are pushing for nuclear-propelled rockets, a return to projects NASA embarked on in the 1950s and 1960s. 
Although billions were spent, none of these nuclear rockets ever got off the ground, and the program for nuclear rockets was canceled, mainly out of concern of such a rocket exploding on launch or crashing back to Earth. And we would return to this dangerous scheme. If we're to explore space, let's do it safely and not endanger life on Earth. I'm Carl Grossman for Enviro Video.